Gloucestershire shocked Hampshire by winning the Royal London One Day Cup quarter final by four wickets with one over to spare in Bristol. The returning Michael Klinger won the toss and inserted the game having been reduced to 34 overs per side and James Fuller found the edge of Michael Carberry's bat third ball. Chris Dent, the man cleaning up in the slips. There was only one run on the board when Adam Wheater threw the bat at David Payne's second delivery and edged to Geraint Jones who was down at third man. A good home crowd were on their feet after such a perfect start for the home team. So it was left to James Vince and Jimmy Adams to arrest the early slide and once they bedded in the runs began to come. Vince drove Benny Howell into the flats for the first six of the game in the 15th over by the end of which Hampshire had recovered to 68 for two. But when Vince tried something similar in Jack Taylor's first over, he picked out Hamish Marshall at long on, the Kiwi holding on well to dismiss the visiting skipper for 31. Adam's knot was now the crucial one for his team and he kept the ball ticking over on his way to a half century, which was made off 64 balls. This one of his five boundaries. The 100 was raised in the next over, the 23rd, as Liam Dawson went very big off Liam Norwell, a huge shot that put some cars in danger. Dawson had got to 21 off 23 balls when he holed out to Tom Smith, the total now on 119 for four with nine overs of the innings remaining. Sean Irvin then offered Fuller a return catch, which once more put Gloucestershire in the ascendancy. Irving gone for a couple with a total on 126 for five in over number 27. Adams then had a life of sorts, although it would have been some catch behind the stumps by Gareth Roderick, the batsman on 74 at the time. Hampshire really needed a flourish to finish and Will Smith sent Payne over long on to register his side's 150. Adams then middled a hit off Fuller in the next over, a beautifully timed shot that crashed into the sight screen at the pavilion end. That had the total up to 167 with four overs of the 34 to go. Adams moved into the 90s as he threw the bat at a wide ball from Payne, the batsman doing just what his side needed. Smith, meanwhile, tried a bit of trickery as the home attack just began to lose their way in the closing stages over number 31, costing 17 runs. It was becoming a really good cameo from Smith as he produced a number of very clever shots to race through the numbers. He and Adams had added 69 in five and a half overs, the stand ending when Adams, who was playing in his 100th one-day game, came back for his second run but was run out by Fuller's accurate throw from the deep. Adams departed for a 97 made off 99 balls, an innings which had kept his side in the hunt for the semis. Two overs to go and the total read 196 for six. Marshall then did the hard work coming in from long off to get rid of Smith on 38, only to spill the chance. Hampshire would have been delighted to get past 200, that being completed with a thumping straight six from the new batsman Gareth Berg. Smith reached a 50 off only 24 balls with his seventh four to go with his 1-6. While Adams had glued this innings together, it was Smith who'd played the role so badly needed at the end. He was out to the last ball as he found Marshall running around from long on. 50 runs had come off the last four overs and 106 off the final 10. And that had given Hampshire something to defend. Their 34 overs ending with a total of 217 for seven. Gloucestershire looked to Klinger to maintain his excellent form in this competition, which had seen him make 307 runs in the groups in spite of injury, which saw him play only five games. He was dropped first ball as Adams missed an opportunity in the covers. Fidel Edwards was bowling with pace. He fired one into Dent. The ball on the batsman quicker than he anticipated. Dent was gone for four with a score on nine. But Klinger and Roderick then started to develop a partnership for the second wicket. They added 45 runs together. Before Roderick, who'd made a dozen, was beaten by a turner from Dawson with a total on 54 for two after 12 overs. Klinger was now key, and he launched Irvin down the ground for the first six of the reply. 
But Gloucestershire then lost their third wicket as Marshall pulled Yasser Arafat to Berg at mid-wicket to go for nine. The total now on 81 for three at the halfway stage of the reply. 137 left to get off the next 17 overs. Klinger, though, was still there and he beautifully on drove Edwards for a four on his way to yet another white ball half century this summer. He reached it with this pull shot, which brought the Australian his 50 off 56 balls with six fours and one six. All of the Gloucestershire supporters' eyes were now firmly fixed on their captain. The 100 was posted in the 20th over, but in the next one, Howell chopped on Chris Wood. He went for nine and left with his side just behind the eight ball on 104 for four. But Klinger remained and he launched Berg for a huge maximum down the ground. The drama was lifted some more as the clouds gathered with Gloucestershire some way behind the Duckworth Lewis target. They needed a big over and Klinger and Jones supplied one for their team in the 27th. It went for 15 and had the Gloucesters right back in the game. But then Yasser Arafat returned to the action and Klinger was crucially held by Adams off a rare fault shot. He departed with 55 needed off 33 balls, out for 87. That target moved to 51 off the final five. Edwards delivering the 30th and it went for 19 runs. Taylor throwing the bat to very good effect too. In a flash, make his side the favourites for a semi-final place to take on either Essex or Yorkshire. It was like a return to the turn of the century when Gloucestershire dominated domestic one-day cricket under the captaincy of Mark Elaine. The atmosphere was now electric. A shower passed by and Taylor then went after Yasser Arafat. Two massive sixes off the first two balls of the 31st over, now putting the home team in complete control. It was another exceptional knock from Taylor, who's more than once this season won games for his team from almost nowhere. Hampshire had no answer to him as he smashed the ball to all parts of the ground. Thanks to him, now only 15 were required from three overs and the game was almost up. But then with 11 needed, Taylor tried to clear the rope again, but found Irvin at long on. Taylor's 34 had been made off just 17 balls. A six by the soon-to-be-retired Jones then took Gloucestershire over the line with six balls remaining. They struck 102 runs off the last 10 overs to take this game by four wickets. It really had been an excellent chase. Gloucestershire ended on 218 for six after 33 overs. Jones unbeaten on 39 from 34 balls. So it is a semi-final place for Gloucestershire. And on this form, neither Essex nor Yorkshire will fancy playing them too much.